Barack Obama is back on the campaign trail and he's making the case against Donald Trump. But before his guest feature in Pennsylvania, Obama made a surprise visit to Kamala Harris's campaign headquarters in Pittsburgh. It was there that he got candid, maybe a little too candid if you are in the vice president's inner circle tonight. He warned that Harris is underperforming him with black voters. And he had a message specifically for black men. Part of it makes me think that, well, you just aren't feeling the idea of having a woman as president. And you're coming up with other alternatives and other reasons for that. Obama cut it out. It's not about Kamala being a woman. It's more about her proven history, her track record of being an enemy to black men. And not just black men, but black women too and black children. She has a proven track record in California of railroading black men. Not only that, she defiantly told black people that she wasn't going to do anything specifically for black people. So I'm not going to sit here and say I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. No. While making sure she specifically looked out for her people, the Asian community. So now you're thinking about sitting out or even supporting somebody who has a history of denigrating you? I know we're not talking about history. When Kamala's history as an official in California is filled with thousands of cases of black men and even Hispanic men that she destroyed. Yes, in her official capacity as DA in San Francisco and in her official capacity as AG of California, she's the one who targeted these men. And again, not just black men, but black women too. The nerve of these people to bring this stuff up and act like she wasn't the top cop. Yes, literally drawing down on black people's heads. That's what she did and even laughed about it. <laughs> because how could I not? <laughs> because you think that's a, a sign of strength? Because that's what being a man is? Putting women down? That's not acceptable. He's saying that black men, they're putting Kamala down. So holding this woman accountable for her record against black men, that's putting her down? Asking this woman for tangible benefits, specifically for black people, that's putting her down? Yeah, this is what Obama said talking to black men. Hmm. CNN political commentator Errol Lewis is in our fifth seat for this conversation. Errol, um, I guess he knew the cameras were there. It was an unscheduled stop, but that message was so pointed. In addition to him making it very clear, Kamala Harris is not doing what she needs to do with this core Democratic constituency. That's right. Although he is asking her, let's be clear, to, to, to go over a very high hurdle. Barack Obama got historic levels of black voter registration yeah. and turnout and support, and he did it twice. It was almost inevitable that it was going to swing more toward the long term uh, average of a handful of black but can voters. Can I interrupt you for just a Republican moment, just to, just to show you something here? Because we went back, looked at 2020 uh, exit polls. Biden got 92 percent of the black vote. Right now, according to Quinnipiac, in Pen this is in Pennsylvania, according to Quinnipiac, Harris is at 78. It's a big gap in this state right now. And that can be closed because Biden is not Barack Obama. Bar Biden is not, on, well, he was Barack uh, Obama's running mate. Right. Um, certainly some spill over there. But she, I mean, you, you cannot ask of every black candidate in the post-Obama era, you've got to come up with 92% of the black vote every time. That is just not a reasonable assumption. Uh, if, the, if the margins are as tight as they're likely to be in this race, that's going to cause you problems in Pittsburgh and in Philadelphia and in Detroit and in Milwaukee and in Atlanta and in all of the swing states. And so they're going to have to come up with a strategy. Now, Barack Obama is trying one strategy, trying to sort of connect with some of the black male voters who they think have been drifting away and are likely to drift away in these last 26 days. I'm not sure that's the right message. I mean, but they have to try something. It's, it's a lot of pressure. I mean, it's not, this is not a 
let me, a nice message. This is a very stern message. Let me ask you a question, Abby and Nina. Let me say, I find it very interesting that we're trying to reach out to white men. We're trying to reach out to black men. The people whose rights are really on the ballot right now are women. And we're begging all these men to pay attention to us and to to care enough about this election, to vote, to come out, to support us. I feel like Barack going on the campaign trail right now makes perfect sense, of course, right? He's a top surrogate for Democrats. He should be out there doing the work right now. I think it's just, it's so amazing to me that with women's rights on the line, we're spending so much time focusing on making sure men care. And listen to this dumb feminist. See, black women, this is what got the women before us in trouble in the first place. Listening to rebellious liberal white women like her talk about women's rights being on the ballot and then allowing that issue to trump everything else. Attempting to make that issue bigger than the economy, bigger than inflation, bigger than all these wars going on, driving us into a potential World War III, bigger than rebuilding the black family. Women like this one right here, they're sabotaging us, trying to make termination rights more important than all of that. And to this dumb powdered donut, the reason that they have President Obama going out to black men is because they have an issue with black men. The reason why they have Tim Walsh trying to reach out to white men is because they have an issue with white men. They have an issue with men, period. White, black, Hispanic, Arab, the ones that are not leaning LGBT, they're not falling for this. And you're not going to win an election with only women, Nimrod. It's not just female voters out there, you have male voters too. Because men, I, I, I don't know, it's because men are the problem men right now for care. Kamala Harris. <laughs> I mean, women. I mean, and, and by the way, uh, uh, Governor Walls, according to Politico, is going to be going out on a mentor, literally a tour of media to appeal to men. They need to appear, appeal to the needs of the voters. And so when I was a delegate for President Obama in both of his elections in Ohio, right now the vice president is down 11 points in Ohio, even though I, I fully expect President Trump to take Ohio as he did twice, but to be down 11 points compared to President Biden, that is a problem. But this other issue I want to bring up is a problem too. Why are black men being lectured to? Why are black men being belittled in ways that no other voting group? Now, a lot of love for former President uh, uh, Obama, but for him to single out black men is wrong. And some of the black men that I have talked to have their reasons why they want to vote a different way. And even if some of us may not like that, we have to respect it. So unless President Barack Obama is going to go out and lecture every other group of men from other identity groups, my message for Democrats is don't bring it here to black men who by and large don't vote much differently from black women. And what, as a politician, we should be trying to get all voters to vote. And hopefully there are a few good men out there who do care about the stripping away of some of women's bodily autonomy. But this is wrong for President Obama. It is a wrong course for the Harris Waltz campaign to lay at the feet of black men when they have their reasons. In 2020, the vice president was labeled a do cop, you, as we know. But do you think, sorry to interrupt you, Nina, but do you think he's right? that some of the reason, one of the reasons is because they don't like the idea of a It might be some, se- listen, house. black men are socialized in the same society as any other, any other man. So yes, is misogyny may be a part of it, but again, is President Obama and is the Harris Waltz campaign going to lecture yeah. other male groups in the same way that they're lecturing This is not men. just about. And see, before she got cut off, Nina Turner was saying something about Kamala being positioned as a top cop before in the last election to lay at the feet of black men when they have their reasons. In 2020, the vice president was labeled a cop, as we know. But do you think... And going down that direction was going to force them to talk about Kamala's history of her prosecutorial targeting of black men in California. Instead, they went into these feminist talking points about misogyny and all this other stuff. No, black men want policies policies that will positively benefit them economically that's going to help them financially not illegal immigrants that's going to bring down their wages or gender changing surgeries no that's not important for men in general black men are also not interested in provoking wars why because at the end of the day these feminists won't be on the front line to fight see those are the conversations they don't want to have that's why instead they blame misogyny I don't think so. It's not just about <coughs> Pennsylvania. It's not just about men. It sounds like there's a concern that there's a broad problem for Vice President Harris with the blue wall. Uh, it, it's, a, it's basically, according to the poll of polls, uh, no clear leader, a tied race essentially in all three of these battleground states. Um, you know, 
I don't know that this is because Trump has run a great campaign, but, <laughs> but I mean, I don't I, think it's that. I, I, I mean, maybe he has, maybe he hasn't, but he has, he has run, he has struggled against Kamala Harris in this early stage, but he's still kept this race pretty tied and maybe has made some inroads in the last couple of weeks. Oh, it, absolutely he has. Uh, her, Vice President Harris's high watermark was about a week and a half after the convention. It's slowly been trickling down. That Quinnipiac poll showing uh, the vice president down in Michigan and Wisconsin sent alarm bells throughout every Democrat office uh, in the country. But I want to say this, the blue wall is cracking and black men are just one part of a broader puzzle that she hasn't been able to reach. Now, to her credit, she hasn't been running for very long. This campaign's new. This is a new experiment of replacing somebody late in the cycle. So, okay, we'll give her that. However, she's struggling with union voters. The two, two of the biggest unions ever didn't endorse her. She's struggling um, with Muslim Americans in, in Michigan, according to, to CARE's own numbers. She's struggling with Hispanics in California. She's not expected to remake the Obama coalition. That's impossible. That's a one in a million, especially given the short time frame. But she has a lot of bigger problems, and that's why you see Tammy Baldwin panicking about yeah. being down more. Here's Debbie Dingell. Uh, people need to see the real Kamala Harris. Uh, this is what she told Axios. They need to let her <clears throat> get in the union halls and just talk to people. Whatever you think about Trump, he's personable. Well, I think that's one of the things. I mean, he obviously, from 2016 all the way through 2020, now through 2024, he comes off as a fighter. He comes off as a fighter for whatever issue matters to you. I think that's one of his big appeals. One of the challenges, I think, for the vice president's campaign is that I don't think Barack Obama is the right surrogate to go out there and do it. No, no. He's beloved by Democrats. He's beloved generally by Americans, but he's never had coattails. Aside from 2008, when he first got elected, Democrats lost more than 1,000 seats in state and federal offices during his eight years. He was the sitting president when Donald Trump won Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin with Barack Obama campaigning in Michigan and in Pennsylvania, and it didn't change the narrative. So I just don't know if he has the coattails. He'll fire up the base, but he's going to get anybody new to come out and vote. You know, the other mistake that they're making is focusing too much on personality. I mean, Kamala Harris has got an appealing personality and we're all getting to know her. But this is the incumbent party. And that's another problem. She's been in office for four years and people can see for themselves the impact their administration has had on their wallets. It's very simple. And nobody cares about her phony personality. We want policies. Policies that's not going to put illegal immigrants before us tangible resources but no all we get is benign neglect and disrespect and that's why she's losing right now let's go ahead and get the conversation started let me know what you think about this below shout out to big sneed i appreciate you big sneed for all of your support as well as our brother emmanuel thank you guys for your contributions to the channel if you want to show your support for the channel too you have to use paypal for now the link is below ladies fellas want a balance analysis want the truth from a woman's perspective then you're going to want to subscribe to this channel and don't forget to like and share